constitutional uh, And I call on the Minister uh, who should move his amendment to the motion. Thank you very much. I move that Dáil Éireann declines to give the Bill a second reading in order that the Citizens' Assembly, established by resolutions of both this House and Shannad Éireann, can conclude its deliberations on the Eighth Amendment, which is the subject matter of this Bill, and report to the Oireachtas in the first half of 2017. So rather than the other side of the House telling me what I think on this issue, please allow me to outline what I actually think on this issue. This Government gave a clear commitment on how it intended to examine the complex an important issue of the Eighth Amendment. Since our last debate on this issue in July, that commitment has been advanced. The Citizens' Assembly has now become a reality. It has held its first meeting. It will deal with the Eighth Amendment as its first piece of work. And it, independently of this House, has declared its intention to report in the first half of next year. This morning, the Government confirmed that a special Oireachtas Committee will be asked to respond to its recommendations within six months. I concluded my contribution during the last debate on this issue by speaking as one of a generation who has never had an opportunity to vote on this issue. I begin tonight in that same place. Like all others who have never had their say, I want mine. But I refuse to pretend it is as simple as those proposing this bill present it. I realise as keenly as anyone else the long and complex history of abortion debate in this country. It is now more than 30 years since the Eighth Amendment was enacted, following a bitter and divisive political debate and amid controversy about the meaning and effect of the new constitutional provision. It is 20 years since the Supreme Court confronted the issue in the urgent circumstances of the X case. And last Kian Korla, it's four years since the tragic death of Savita Halepinaver. And it's just three years since the last government, which I was proud to be a member, finally addressed the generational neglect of that Supreme Court ruling by passing the Protection of Life During Pregnancy Bill to give effect to that Supreme Court ruling. Despite the limited nature of that legislation, remember how it divided this House, remember how it divided political parties, and remember how it divided people. Remember the differing points of view and the difficult but important discussions that it entailed. Then, as now, this country and this House is bound by the Constitution. A referendum was held in 1983 and regardless of one's views, and I certainly have views, resulted in the adoption of a provision which became Article 43.3 of the Irish Constitution, <coughs> now commonly known as the Eighth Amendment. As you're all aware, Article 43.3 reads as follows. The state acknowledges the right to life of the unborn and with due regard to the equal right to life of the mother, guarantees by its laws to respect and as far as is practical by its laws to defend and vindicate that right. The private member's bill before the House this evening provides for a referendum to delete the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution. Tabling a referendum bill, Alaska and Corda, is the easy part. Telling the Irish people what would replace that constitutional amendment in law or elsewhere is the difficult work we now must do. As the proponents of this bill well know, and as I know, to hold a referendum you must do your homework and you must properly engage with and inform the Irish people. We saw it with the children's referendum. We saw it with the important marriage equality referendum. It cannot be ignored that there are significant policy and legal issues involved in changing the Eighth Amendment. Simply deleting it opens up major questions for our existing laws and the future legislative framework which would, which would apply. Important questions and questions which must be answered before tabling the referendum. Simply deleting it raises significant implications for medical practice and for the ethical codes of professional regulatory bodies. Simply deleting it takes no account of the differences of opinion in society and it will be the will of the people that will decide this issue. There are those who believe the X case was wrongly decided and that there should be another referendum to row back on the right to an abortion in the case of suicide. However, there were two referendums in this country in 1992 and in 2002 which tried to remove suicide as a ground and they were defeated. Recent public debate has indicated public support for termination of pregnancies in the case of rape, incest or fatal fetal abnormality. However, other groups, as is their right, would like to seek much broader grounds for termination. So let's not pretend this is simple. This is a complex debate. As Minister for Health, I understand that the inclusion of the Eighth Amendment in our Constitution has caused much hardship and uncertainty for women who experience a crisis pregnancy and for our healthcare professionals who provide a clinical service to them. And I am not satisfied, Alas Kim Gorla, with this situation. Our last debate in this House on the issue of abortion was on foot of legislative proposals by Deputy Mick Wallace on the issue of fatal fetal abnormalities. While I was not able to support the legislation because of the constitutional reality, as we listen to the stories of women who receive a diagnosis of fatal fetal abnormality, and I met them again only last week, 
We know that the current constitutional and statute law causes added distress to women and to families who are already distraught. I would like to change this situation as soon as possible. But we have to provide the public with comprehensive information about the legal and policy changes that would follow upon a change to the Constitution. Clearly, if this Bill were to pass here tonight, it would do so both in a policy and a legal vacuum. For these reasons, I would ask that we in this House, who only set up the Citizens' Assembly, give the Assembly the time it needs to consider the issues and report back to this Oireachtas in the first half of next year. The establishment and the terms of reference of the Assembly were approved by a resolution of both Houses of the Oireachtas only in July. The Assembly is required to consider the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution and report its recommendations on the matter to the Oireachtas, as I have said, in the first half of 2017. Judge Mary Lafoy, a Justice of the Supreme Court, is chairing the Assembly, comprised of 99 citizens randomly chosen from the population. The first meeting of the Assembly took place in Dublin Castle on the 15th of October, and a list of dates have already been agreed to discuss the Eighth Amendment over the next number of months. I want to thank the women and men who, on all our behalfs, are undertaking this mammoth task. It is a true example of civic service, and you do have the gratitude and the support of many. The Assembly's recommendations will be acted upon by a special Oireachtas Committee, which will be asked to report in six months. The Government is today asking the Business Committee of the Oireachtas to lay the preparatory groundwork for this committee so that it can begin its work without delay. Colleagues, I know that the time this will take is too long as far as some people both inside and outside of this House are concerned. But just as the last government addressed the Supreme Court judgment in the X case after 20 years of neglect and avoidance by politicians on all sides of this House, the current government will address the issue of the Eighth Amendment. But we want to do so in the best way. We must do the preparatory work to properly inform debate, to facilitate considered and respectful dialogue, to try to build insofar as is possible consensus across Irish society on an issue that has divided society for decades. I believe truly that the Citizens' Assembly is a forum in which to do that. It is the best way, and it will do the people a great service in examining all of the complex issues involved. We saw, and Deputy Coppinger referenced the marriage equality referendum, we saw the role that the Constitutional Convention played in informing public debate, in putting information into the public domain, in teasing out issues, and we saw a referendum on foot of that, and we know how happily I was, and you were, and all of us were, to see that referendum pass, Deputy. Although I cannot support the bill before us this evening, I do welcome the opportunity to debate this again. And it is important we debate this. And nobody is trying to silence debate, as I heard others talk about earlier today. In particular, I genuinely do welcome the changed tone, which has been noticeable in our discussions even in the last three years. We've got to discuss this issue. We've got to address this issue. And I would like to especially pay tribute to those who have come forward and told their very personal stories. Those stories have shaped my own personal views and remind us all of how real people experience our laws and their effect on medical practice. I wish I could tell them that we could solve this tomorrow, but I know that that simply isn't true. I recognise that colleagues on all sides of this house come to the debate with deeply held principles, and I accept your bona fides and I hope you accept mine. But for my part, I cannot and will not do Women of Ireland the disservice by pretending this question can be answered with one word or three words, or one bill. It is, on this basis, it is on this basis that the government moves its reasoned amendment in order that the Citizens' Assembly, established by this very House and the other House in July, can conclude its deliberations, can make its recommendations, and that the Oireachtas Committee can get on with acting upon those recommendations. We have proven that we will address the issues that were neglected for generations. We saw that in the X case, and I'm determined that we address the issues related to the Eighth Amendment. But let the Citizens' Assembly do the very important work that it needs to do. Uh,